There's Kimberly. Hey, Kimberly. I'm going to give it just a minute. Um, thank you, everyone who's joined so far. It looks like a few more people are going to be logging on. So we'll just give it maybe one more minute. Kimberly, you good? Can we hear you? Yes. OK, perfect. All right, welcome everyone. Yep. Let's let's go ahead and get started. Thanks for joining us today, everyone. Uh, my name is Katie Flores, and I will be moderating today. If you have any questions or comments throughout the presentation, I'll be keeping an eye on the chat. If you want to um, add any comments or questions, there we'll also have a little bit of time at the end if you have questions. Um, and then at the end, we're going to have a special giveaway, so be sure to stay for the whole presentation. And I am now going to turn it over to Kimberly Knight, who is the caregiver, the director of the caregiver support program at the Senior Source. Thank you, Katie. Hello, everyone. My name is Kimberly Knight, and thank you so much for joining us. We at the Senior Source are always excited to um, bring education to the community and definitely share about the services and programs we offer at the Senior Source. Um, today's topic, the Mind Diet Foods to Feed Your Brain, is another um, food demonstration that we're doing just to help us as we are aging and um, having different things going on with our bodies that we know exactly what we should be eating, can eat, and just have good food. As I was talking to these ladies yesterday, um, most of us really enjoy the process of eating. I know that I do. And so we're always looking for new recipes and things that just taste good and not only taste good, but are good for us. So without further ado, I wanna turn things over to Cindy Kleckner. But before I do, I just wanna let everyone know that um, today's workshop is being sponsored by the North Central Texas COG Area Agency on Aging. And we are so thankful to them for their funding and support. So Cindy, take us away with all of the good recipes and food for our health. Thank you, Kimberly. Thank you, Katie. It's so good to be back. Um, I'm a registered dietitian and I specialize in the area of culinary. And what that means is I really enjoy teaching about nutrition using food. And so my goal during these programs is really to raise the awareness of different health issues and different topics that are of interest to people these days. And, you know, the, the one that really comes to mind right now as we age is really taking care of our brain. And so today the focus is gonna be on, you know, foods that you can eat and recipes that you can do to help your aging brain. So today we're gonna to talk about a program called the Mind Diet. Um, what do you think keto and um, you know, the um, high protein diets and the Atkins diets and all the different diets out there have in common with the mind? If you answered anything, the, the answer is really none of the above because the mind diet is so much better in terms of eating a whole food diet. Some of the programs that are out there that people attach themselves to and you know, really kind of uh, follow these days are really not balanced in terms of the protein, carbohydrate and fat. And some of them are missing some major food groups. I have a few things on display here today that I'm gonna use in the culinary demo. And that's really the message that I wanna give before we even get started, is that it's so important to have a good variety in your diet. It's important to have good balance. And it's important to have you know, some of the, all the food groups at, uh, at every meal. So that's really the focus uh, for a healthy diet. Now, when we're talking specifically about the brain, the diet that I want to refer to is called the MIND diet. And MIND is actually an acronym for the Mediterranean DASH, Intervention for Neurogenerative Delay. So when you're talking about the brain, 
you know, we have done a culinary demo on the DASH diet before, and everyone is really aware of the Mediterranean diet. And this particular program is actually a combination of both of those programs. The main difference being it's not as specific in terms of following a special diet. It really is more focused on eating certain foods. So there's 15 different components that are related to this MIND diet. And all the different food groups are listed. Whoops, green leafy vegetables. We wanna have those at least once a day or at least five times a week. And green leafy vegetables like spinach and you know all the dark greens, the kale, romaine, collards, turnip greens, all those important dark greens, they're gonna give us a lot of nutrition and a lot of antioxidants. Other vegetables are also very important. And when we talk about the MIND diet specifically, they don't necessarily give you specifics except for the dark green leafy vegetables that you need to include. But I would say focus on all variety and also focus on things that are from the cabbage family that are called cruciferous vegetables. Things like broccoli and Brussels sprouts and kale and arugula and bok choy. Those are all very, very good. Another premise of the MIND diet is to include specifically berries. And we're gonna talk about the background of this MIND diet in a little bit, but berries are especially important, not to exclude any other vegetable, or excuse me, fruits that are out there, but berries are specifically important for good brain health and to eat those at least two times a week. Another really important food that is uh, very, very special for the brain are nuts. You know, back in the 80s, even dietitians weren't including a lot of nuts in the diet because they were high in fat. And at that time, we were really focusing on a lower fat program. But it's important to get good fat in the diet. And that's what you get when you have nuts. So nuts are really, really important. And I would say that would be a really good snack to focus on just about every day. The MIND diet says at least five times a week. This is a quarter of a cup. And I actually measured it out just to kind of give you an example of what a quarter of a cup looks like in terms of a serving size. I like to buy them in a big quantity because, you know, you get a better uh, deal as far as uh, what you pay for those nuts. And I think a jar at, at Costco or Sam's is usually about $14 or $15. But I like to measure them out in quarter cup baggies so that I know what a serving really is. Because if I'm dipping out of that jar, it can get really, really out of hand in terms of calories. Because nuts are high in fat, but they're also very high in fiber and other nutrients. And they're so good in terms of a you know, keeping you satisfied, gives you protein. So nuts are especially good, but you want to keep your portions intact. But a couple, you know, five, two to five, three to five times a week would be really good in terms of eating nuts. You don't have to eat them as a snack. You can put them in your salads, which we're going to talk about in a little bit. Another important food are beans, uh, beans and legumes. We want to have those, let's say every other day, three times a week. And beans could be in the form of, you know, a bag of beans that you cook, you know, that you soak and then you cook. These are very economical. They're very, um, you know, health conscious. They're very high in fiber. They're very high in protein. Or, you know, if you don't have the, uh, can the, the dried beans, you can certainly have beans in a can. And these are very economical as well. So beans are really especially important for good brain health. And we're gonna talk about a few ways to use those in your diet. And then of course, whole grains are really, really important as opposed to eating a lot of refined products like white pasta, white rice, uh, you know, white noodles, white bread. It's so much better to have a whole grain uh, variety because whole grains are gonna give you more nutrients because you, you have the whole grain in there, the bran, the sperm, the, uh, the germ. So when you're talking about a whole grain, you're really getting a lot more nutrition, a lot more nutrients. Plus, if you're one of those people like me that really care about flavor, you're gonna get so much more flavor when you have that nuttiness that you get from eating whole grains. And you want to have those at least three times a week, if not more. Now, the MIND diet also focuses on another protein besides beans. It also talks about fish and how important it is to have fish at least once a week. 
Now, as, as we're talking about these things, obviously if you had it two to five times, it would be good. And using fish or seafood in general as your protein source is a really good option. How about oils? You know, over the years, we've kind of refined our messages about the different kinds of oils we should use. Well, when it comes to the MIND diet, olive oil is really especially important. Uh, this is a bottle that I recently brought back from Italy that I'm just so excited to, to dive into. Um, but extra virgin olive oil is especially important because of the polyphenols and those added nutrients that you get for good brain health. So we need to use olive oil as our primary oil, but knowing that it is a higher caloric source, you want to use it sparingly. So that old adage of if some, if some is good, more is better really doesn't apply. You want to use it as you would for cooking or in salads or, you know, as a flavoring agent, but you really want to monitor the amount because it is a higher caloric food item. Now, last, uh, the last thing on the, the list for the mind diet would be wine. Honestly, I haven't had any today, but I poured some because it looks so much nicer in a glass. But wine is uh, having wine once a day, a very small portion, like four ounces, is a, is a benefit for good brain health. But I always say that if, you, if you're not already drinking, I wouldn't get started because of all the other you know, can, potential issues that you can have related to drinking alcohol. So it's a plus, but it's not necessary. But having a glass of wine a day is good. Having two or three or four is not so good. So it's important to think about moderation in all things. So that kind of gives us a little bit of rundown of what is included in the MIND diet. And again, if you've heard me before, my one, my one message is that it's so important to think about this as nutrition by addition. So most of the diets that you see out there in the popular press are all about elimination. Eliminate this, don't eat that, you know, this is bad for you, good and bad food list. This is about adding food that is really delicious, healthy, uh, nature made, whole food. And it doesn't have to be in the fresh form, even though I have a lot of fresh food here. It can be canned, it can be fresh frozen. It could be dried, it could be in juice form. All of those count. So it's very, very important to think about, you know, whole food doesn't necessarily just mean fresh, but it does mean food that comes from the earth that really has a lot of good nutrition. Because what I like to say is that uh, Mother Nature really knows how to package food. And that's why it's so important to use less uh, processed food. Now that doesn't mean that all processed food is not good for you. I showed you a can of beans. You know, that is a very good, economical, healthy, nutritious way to eat a protein source. Um, there are ways to manage it if you are water, watching your sodium intake. You know, rinsing your beans under cold running water will reduce 40% of the sodium. So there's a lot of ways to manage. Uh, when we talk about processing, even milk is processed. Um, we need to pasteurize milk for the good of everyone. So, you know, that is a considered a process, processed food. So what I mean is just eating food that's closest to the earth, that you don't have to open a lot of boxes or packages and that sort of thing to really uh, get the nutrients you need. And people are usually concerned about the amount of money that they spend on this type of program. The reality is it's so important to shop with coupons and plan. I always say that planning to fail, failing to plan is planning to fail. And what I mean by that is it's so important to make a little list, you know, have a meal plan in mind, uh, draw out or sketch out what you're going to have to eat for the week so that before you go to the grocery store, you can get the things that you need. Um, and maybe you'll alter your plan a little bit when you see what's on sale. And that's why it's important to look at your supplements that come in the mail, um, you know, uh, participate in some of the reward programs that some of the grocery stores have. And that's a really, really good way to be extra cautious that you're going to stay within your budget when you're trying to follow a more healthy, balanced eating plan. 
So um, that's a good overview. Now let's talk a little bit about the MIND diet. So the MIND was actually started as a clinical trial. There were about 600 participants that were recruited for this ages 64 to 85 or 65 to 84. And, you know, they, they were grouped into the category and broken into different groups. One actually followed what we call the MIND diet. And then one uh, followed uh, basically what they were already eating with a little modification of calories. So they both were modified in um, the calories that they were eating by about 250 calories less per day than they were normally eating. So that, that's really not excessive. It was very modest. But the reality is that the researchers had people grouped into um, these two different groups at two facilities, one in Chicago, Rush University Medical Center, and one at the, um, the Harvard School of Public Health up in uh, the Northeast. So there were two different groups and the results of the study just came out in June of uh, 2021. And the reality was that they've been able to show that if you follow something like the MIND diet, that you, and if you follow it very strictly, you could probably reduce your incidence of uh, Alzheimer's and dementia by about 53%. But they also showed with even a simple modification or um, if they adhered to it uh, a good bit of the time, not 100% strictly, that you could reduce the incidence of dementia and Alzheimer's by 25%. So, you know, it's really something that we all should think about. It's not much different than what we call the DASH diet. It's not much different than following the dietary guidelines for Americans, but it is being a little bit more diligent about the choices that you make and being um, very specific about your choices. Now, obviously, if you know you have heart disease, if you have kidney disease, if you have diabetes, I always say it's so important before you start any program to talk to your healthcare provider, just to be sure that uh, you might, you know, maybe you need a few modifications. And uh, I would highly recommend seeking out the services of a registered dietitian nutritionist because they can really be helpful in terms of uh, helping you develop a meal plan that's really for you. There may be um, a few food and uh, drug interactions if you're on certain medications that you need to be aware of, and only a dietitian or um, a registered dietitian nutritionist can really help you navigate the waters with that. So anyway, let's go ahead and get started because um, if you're like me, it's so therapeutic to be in the kitchen. I absolutely love to share my passion and love to think about maybe lighting the fire for a few of you who may not have the same interest in, in cooking in the kitchen because it's the best way to take care of your health. All right, the first recipe, and by the way, you're gonna be getting a handout if it's not already available in the chat that talks about the three recipes that we're gonna to make today, but I always have a lot of variations to, to talk to you about. So the first one is gonna be a really simple salad but it's wonderful for um, this time of year because of all the fresh berries that are out. And as I mentioned before, the MIND diet really focuses a lot on strawberries, blueberries, raspberries, blackberries. So let's get started. First, we're gonna make a little simple dressing and it calls for, um, I'm making a small portion of this. So two tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil. And then I'm gonna add two tablespoons of white wine vinegar. And uh, I'm going to, I usually make my own dressing. You could do it either in a bowl with a whisk, or I like to do it in these little containers where you can actually measure and uh, stir it up or shake it really good. This recipe is so, so easy. And I feel like it has so much more flavor than those that you could get at the grocery store. And these are ingredients that I already have in my pantry or refrigerator. I'm also going to add a little bit of this, um, it's a uh, Simply Fruit jam, and uh, this one is actually raspberry, you can use strawberry, so in, instead of using like a sugar or, um, you know, something else in your dressing, because this is basically oil and vinegar, and most oil and vinegar do have a little bit of sweetener, 
this is gonna be the sweetener and it's gonna add that wonderful raspberry flavor. So you can see, I put my lid on, shake it up real good. And that's all there is to this dressing. And it really goes well with the berries, uh, with the raspberries. If you want, you could do strawberry. And this is really good on fruit if you like a little bit of dressing on your fruit. But this is wonderful for a fresh, wonderful salad that you can have this, this summer. The greens that I'm using today are dark greens, if you can see that. And these dark greens are going to give me so much more nutrition, so much more bang for your buck. I have spinach in here. I have arugula. I have some uh, red, dark, uh, dark red leafy uh, greens. There's also some uh, romaine in here. And I like to buy these uh, baby greens. Sometimes they have herb mixes. Sometimes they have spinach. A lot of times a uh, good variety like this one. And it really gives you more nutrition. So the darker the green, the more nutritional value, as opposed to using something like iceberg lettuce, which is really just a lot of water. If you want to embellish this with a little more crunch, I've discovered these little baby romaines. Uh, some places call them little gems. These are also really good um, to add the crunch that people might miss when they're uh, not using the uh, iceberg lettuce. So what I like to do is cut this in half, chop it up, and it's very important to always wash your greens, especially when they come in a package like this, as opposed to in a clam where they're already pre-washed. I like to uh, put those in my salad spinner. And this is one of the, my favorite kitchen tools that I've, I've had forever. You can wash herbs in here, any kind of lettuce, really any vegetable, but you chop up your romaine, put it in your salad spinner, and then um, actually rinse it under cold running water until you get all the grit and you know maybe some um, you know other loose things that are in, inside your leaves. And then also just spin them in your salad spinner. And what that does is it prevents, it, it kind of gets rid of all the water and it, it, it helps with the salad dressing sticking to the leaves a little bit. If your lettuce is really wet when you dress your salad, it's gonna just slide off the leaves. So then you're gonna always wanna put more salad dressing on it. So that's one little secret that I like to do. And I like to buy these whole heads as opposed to getting the chopped version for a lot of different reasons. Um, anytime you buy anything that's pre-processed like that, it's gonna really go bad quicker because of all the exposed you know, edges. There's so, many, so much more surface area. Um, so if you buy it like this, it's probably gonna stay a little bit longer in your fridge. And you can certainly, um, if you plan ahead, you can certainly wash it up, rinse it, uh, spin it and then put it in your refrigerator in a Ziploc bag and it'll last in there for two or three days already already chopped up and that's really a good uh, secret to like quick and easy tips because I think a lot of us really get overwhelmed by what am I going to cook and nothing's prepared and then six o'clock hits and everyone's in a scramble so anyway um, a lot of different tricks and, and tips of the trade so here are my lettuce greens, and all I'm gonna do is just add some of my berries, and um, I'm gonna add some strawberries to the mix, and you can certainly chop them or cut them however you want. I like to do some slices. I like to add a handful of blueberries, um, obviously some raspberries in the mix. And uh, this is so, so very simple and so easy and so delicious. And obviously I've washed all my veggies. That's a very important thing to do. Um, a lot of times people don't take that step. And um, you know we've had outbreaks of E. coli and foodborne illness, and we certainly don't wanna be dealing with that. So it's very, very important to always wash all of your produce under cold running water, even if it's an avocado, even if it's a cantaloupe, because when you slice into your fruit, you're gonna, if there's any bacteria on the outside, it may enter on the inside when you chop it up. So anyway, that is all there is to this salad. I also am adding some extra nuts. This, um, the nuts that I've chosen today are sliced almonds, which I've toasted in the oven. Anytime you want additional flavor, toasting a nut is really good because it just adds uh, extra nuttiness to that, to that nut. 
And um, you can certainly use whatever nut you have, you know, don't be a slave to these recipes, add what you want. And then I'm gonna add a little bit of my dressing. And I like to limit it to, uh, depending on the size of my, my salad, uh, probably a tablespoon is more than enough. And there we go. How easy is that? And um, so then when I go to serve it, I am gonna make use of some of the things that I've had the last couple nights for dinner. There's always a few things that are left over. So here's my wonderful salad. I'm gonna bring some of those wonderful fruits to the front so that you can see them. This is such an easy, wonderful, quick salad. And you can do it so many different ways by adding different ingredients. So for instance, you might just want to call this your salad for the day. Now the nuts are gonna add a little bit of protein because every time you eat, you do want a little bit of protein with that meal because that helps stabilize your blood sugar and then you're not hungry within a couple of hours. It has, it, it provides you with a little lasting energy for, uh, to get you through the next, to power you through the next meal. But nuts will do it. Now I might have some leftover quinoa or farro that I might've had for another meal. When I cook those kinds of grains, I like to cook a little bit of extra so that I can use them in different ways, turn them into pilafs, adding them to a salad. So when I'm mixing it up, I could throw in like a half of a cup of quinoa and quinoa is an ancient grain. The beauty of it is that it has a complete amino acid profile. So when you're adding it to your grain, it's just like adding meat or seafood or poultry. So plain with nuts, quinoa, or you might find that maybe a piece of salmon from the night before is a good way to go. And um, this is a very simple meal. You could eat the salmon cold on your salad. If you want, you could heat it up. Um, if you bought it raw, you could grill it, you could saute it in your skillet. Um, very simple, very easy, very nutritious, and also very good for your brain health because fish has what we call omega-3 fatty acids. So the type of fat contained in fish is very good for brain health. It is an anti-inflammatory, it also helps to keep our platelets less sticky. So it's really good for heart health and especially good for brain health. If we didn't wanna do the salmon, I'm gonna take that off for a minute. Maybe I have some leftover shrimp or maybe I found some cold boiled shrimp in the uh, refrigerated section or the seafood section of the grocery store that was a day old that needed to be sold really quickly. I can add my shrimp on here and make that a wonderful, delicious salad. A lot of times I hear from clients, they're so concerned about shrimp because, because of the old message that they're so high in cholesterol. Well, if you're having a modest serving of shrimp and you're not eating a lot of fatty meat and skin on your chicken and a lot of fried foods and gravies, and if you're not eating a lot of uh, excess cheese, you can certainly stand to have uh, some cholesterol on your shrimp. So when I think about cold boiled shrimp, you can't get better than you know the protein content. And unless you're adding a lot of butter, like if you're making shrimp scampi, cold boiled shrimp or even just grilled or sauteed is really the way to go because it's quick, it's easy, and um, you know it's it's so delicious. So those are just a few items that you can add to this salad to really beef up the nutrition. And every time I plan a meal or every time I look in my fridge, my goal is to think about what can I add to this meal to make it nutritious? How can I add leaky greens, other veggies? How can I add berries? How can I add beans? How can I add nuts? Um, should I use fish or poultry? How can I you know, get my olive oil in there? So, you know, very, very easy, very simple and uh, quite delicious. So anyway, that is one item that we were gonna do today. And I still have some leftover shrimp that I might even have for a snack some other time. So that's the first recipe that we're doing today. 
And then obviously I keep my nuts for other purposes for if I have some uh, leftover uh, brown rice or if I have leftover quinoa or ancient grains, I usually just add some nuts and some leftover veggies. And that crunch kind of gives me um, some wonderful texture, added fiber, a little bit of protein. So I always have different kinds of nuts in my pantry, obviously nuts as a snack that are also very healthy that you could kind of change them up. Um, we've also heard that walnuts are also very good in terms of omega-3 fatty acids. So, you know, any kind of nut is really delicious. And by changing up the nut, you change up the flavor of that food item. So it's really, really good. All right, we're gonna move on. And uh, if anyone has any questions. Yes, yeah, Cindy, uh, there's, there is a question. Um, what are some fibrous foods to add to the salad or any snacks? Uh, fiber foods, you can certainly add any kind of veggies. Um, I mentioned quinoa and all of your ancient grains. Those are awesome in terms of fiber. Um, not any kind of nuts are high in fiber. You can certainly add, you know, other veggies like raw carrots. Um, you know, if you have leftover broccoli, you know, whatever it is you have, you know, a lot of times we get stuck in a rut and, and we don't really think out of the box and just, um, you know, especially if you have leftovers in your fridge, you can add any vegetable to the mix. Uh, you can certainly have some whole grain bread with this if you want it or a whole grain, but always look for the word whole grain, 100% whole grain, not just a wheat bun or a wheat a piece of wheat bread, but you want to look for something that's whole grain, maybe some whole grain or stone ground crackers uh, you might want to have with your with your salad. Those are the things that are going to give you fiber, fruits, veggies, whole grains, okay. nuts. OK, that's you don't good. get you don't get fiber from meat. You don't get fiber from your your seafood, but the other foods you do. OK, any other that questions? Helps. That's it for now. OK. All righty, the next recipe we're going to do, and I'm going to turn on my gas or my electric um, burner here. We're going to talk about another seafood dish that is really, really delicious and good and quick and easy and very economical. And that is cod. Um, when you're trying to, you know, eat a healthy eating program, uh, and specifically the MIND diet, there are five foods that they suggest to try to eat less of, the less the better. One is red meat, one is butter, one are sweets, uh, cheese, pastries, obviously, and then fried food. Those are the things that if you follow the MIND diet, those are the things that we want less of or we wanna to try to eliminate in our diet. Um, so the protein sources are primarily your beans, your, uh, your fish and poultry. So I wanted to do a fish dish because I love cooking fish. I think that when people start feeling a little bit more confident and, um, you know, with the, with, with cooking seafood, they're so much better off because it goes quick and easy. In fact, when you're eating or cooking fish, it takes no, no more than 10 minutes per inch. A thickness. So I'm going to get this burner heated up. And uh, I want to show you the seafood. Let's see. So hold on one second. So the cod is what, the one I chose today because I already used salmon in my salad. And I wanted to use something that was economical because I think these days we're all in a pinch when it comes to shopping and groceries. I don't know about you, but my, my grocery uh, bill has really doubled in price. The cod is about $9.99 a pound. This is a, 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 a three and a half, four ounce serving. And uh, it looks quite large on this small plate, but it really is sufficient for a meal. And you know, a lot of a lot of times people think, well, that's so expensive. But if you right size the portion, I can guarantee that the price of your, your food is going to really be more in line with what it should be and not overboard. Because I think we all tend to eat a little bit more than we should when it comes to portions. So the the way to alleviate that in your mind is really to use a smaller plate because smaller portions or portions on a smaller plate look bigger, and then they kind of give you a sense that you're not being cheated. 
So uh, cot is a really, really good option here. And I'm trying to get this, this heater, uh, this burner to heat up really fast. But cod is very neutral in flavor. It is, you can do so many different things with it. Um, you know, but get what you like, get what you can find. A lot of people like catfish, a lot of people like redfish. There's so many different ones out there. Some are better in terms of omega-3, the ones that are the cold water fish, like the salmon, rainbow trout, yellow tuna, halibut. Some of them have quite a hefty price tag on them. Like I think the last time I looked, halibut is, you know, to the tune of like $24.99. This is so much more affordable. You still get the protein, excellent protein. You still get all the good qualities in your seafood. Now this recipe that we're gonna do today is gonna use um, what, I, what I really enjoy um, as a, a flavoring agent. It's called fennel. A lot of times you'll hear people call it anise. And uh, this is kind of what it looks like when you buy it. It has a lot of these green fronds, a stem, and then the bulb at the bottom is the fennel. Has a wonderful sort of a licorice flavor. And what I did was I washed it really well. I cut it in half and then I sliced it into uh, thin slices because we're gonna saute that. And that's gonna be one of the vegetables that goes with this dish. But as a flavoring agent, I'm gonna take some fennel seed and I'm gonna add a little bit of uh, red pepper flakes. Not a lot because I don't want a lot of heavy spice, but I do want a little bit for flavor. And then I'm just gonna grind this down a little bit and you could do it in like a baggie, uh, like a Ziploc bag. And um, you can just take a, a mallet, a meat mallet, and just grind it down. Or you can grind it in a mortar and pestle here and uh, just kind of grind down those seeds a little bit. And anytime you season any food and you use the whole version of the seasoning, like a whole nutmeg, or if you use the fennel seeds, you're gonna get such an amazing flavor as opposed to if it's already dried or um, you know, if it's already ground up. So that is just one little trick. It's not a must, but it certainly adds a lot of flavor. So what I'm gonna do is add a little bit of olive oil to my skillet and get that good and hot. As you can tell, I put my skillet on here first, and then I'm gonna add, um, after the, uh, the oil gets good and warm, good and hot, I'm gonna go ahead and add my, my fennel. And I'm gonna saute that for probably 10 minutes or so. And we may not have time to really do the whole thing, but you can see how this is um, filling the skillet. And then as it cooks, it's gonna kind of shrink down a little bit, but it's gonna add such wonderful, wonderful flavor to this fish. So this is actually gonna be a dish that's a fish that's poached in tomato sauce. And you can poach in a lot of different liquids in water, you can poach in wine, you can poach using uh, olive oil, but I like to poach using tomato sauce because it really gives you those wonderful carotenoids, you know, flavonoids. It's really delicious in terms of flavor. Um, so I'm using today just a basic marinara spaghetti sauce that I purchased at the grocery store. And I have some brands that I really, really enjoy that I love so much better than others. But some of them are very authentic flavors. If you don't have the jarred spaghetti sauce, you can certainly use canned um, tomato sauce or, or chopped tomatoes. But I really like to have some of these on hand because that's always a quick and easy meal in my house. If I don't have anything else, there's always going to be a jar of spaghetti in there that I can do something with. And um, you know, who would have thought that you could poach in tomato sauce? but I like to think of it as having a, an extra vegetable with my dish. So this is cooking up quite nice. I'm gonna add my seasonings that I ground up. And I wish we could, I wish you could have a little smell because it's, it smells so wonderful in terms of that licorice -y flavor. You can even smell the red pepper flakes. And honestly, I always say this, but don't feel like you have to be a slave to the recipe. If you don't have, these uh, seasonings, try some smoked paprika, which would be absolutely awesome. 
Or maybe if you want to go in a different direction, you could maybe even add a little bit of cumin. But that's what we're doing here is just sauteing this down. And then I'm going to add, once it gets good and soft, I'm going to add my spaghetti sauce. And I'm going to add a little bit of water to thin it down. And you can see how we've kind of uh, prepped this for our poaching liquid. Okay, so now that that's all kind of blended together, I'm going to give it a little, a uh, couple minutes so that it'll boil and kind of the flavors marinate together. And then when it's good and hot, I'm going to go ahead and add my cod and then I'm going to cover it with a lid and just let it uh, poach, just let it cook. And I find that most people really get concerned about they want to be sure everything's cooked so much because of foodborne illness. And I think a lot of times people overcook protein as a result. And the best way to know for sure is really take the temperature of that food. And uh, when it comes to seafood, you want it to be about 165 degrees Fahrenheit. So using a, a food thermometer is probably the best way to determine um, you know, the doneness of any food item. Okay, now that that's cooking a little bit, I'm going to go ahead and add my piece of cod in there. I'm just going to cover it up with the sauce. And then I'll take a lid and just let it cook for a minute. And while that's cooking, I want to talk again a little bit about food safety. You know, anytime you're preparing food, if you're preparing a salad and you are, um, you know, you want to use a certain cutting board to cut all of your ingredients. If you use any kind of raw food, like I just did the, the raw seafood, you want to be sure that you have another cutting board or that you wash it really good because you can always uh, transfer that bacteria from one thing to the other. So that's why I always try to do the things, I cut the things first that I that don't need cooked. And then I move on to the protein or other things that are going to be cooked in that uh, for that meal. Um, so it's really important to always use, you know, warm soapy water to, to wash everything off. But things that I hear people do are taking a raw piece of fish or chicken or poultry or meat and uh, taking it from the, the, the uh, plate onto the grill when they're grilling. And then when they go to serve it, they put it on that same plate again. And that's called cross-contamination. So you really want to try to prevent that. That's where a lot of the foodborne illness comes in our home kitchens. So we have to be extra cautious. And to go back a few steps, it's always really important to wash our hands under you know, warm, soapy, uh, running water just so that we can get our hands good and clean. And I, I wash my hands so much uh, when I'm cooking just because I think it's important to keep them clean. So um, you know, make sure that that is part of your uh, kitchen routine. So this is, this is coming up to a full boil here. And uh, you can see how quick this is happening. Like, I don't even know, less than five minutes. And we have this wonderful, wonderful piece of fish almost ready. Um, you could tell that the, the, uh, the diameter or the um, thickness of that meat or that seafood is a little bit thicker. So I want to be sure that I leave it in there for a good, you know, 10 minutes. And, um, but some meat that you get or some poultry that you get is very, very thin. Like if you were to cook a rainbow trout, it is probably, you know, a quarter or uh, maybe less than a half an inch thickness that it's going to cook a lot quicker. So think about that when you're, uh, you know, pressed for time too as well. But I think learning how to cook fish is really the way to go because it is so quick, easy, and it's fail proof. So, um, this is pretty much done. And um, also the texture of this product, or this, this uh, fish item actually went from very translucent to very opaque. And you can see these veggies, even though I didn't cook them completely, they've, they've cooked a lot in, this, in the tomato sauce. And I have a wonderfully rich flavor that, um, you know, it's just very savory, delicious. And uh, I have a couple of vegetables in here already, but I wanted to show you a couple other secrets. If I wanted to serve this, I have my uh, fish, I have my two veggies. 
if you're going to have a sufficient amount of sauce. But there are so many of these little packages that you can buy at the grocery store that actually have a grain. This one has green lentils. This one is a cilantro lime. I just used up my uh, multi-grain medley, which is the one that I would highly recommend to get the whole grain in. But all you have to do is break open the package, pop them in the microwave for 90 seconds, and you have a wonderful whole grain dish ready to go with your seafood in 90 seconds. So I highly recommend uh, getting these and I like to buy them when they're on sale. And these uh, are usually a pouch is good for, I think it's three servings, two and a half servings. And um, one serving for, yeah. So, um, so these are a really good way to go in terms of what can I add that's quick and easy, that's really healthy. Now, some of these products are gonna have extra salt or extra ingredients because they're seasoned. So I highly recommend getting the ones that are not seasoned because all it is is just a plain product. You know, there's nothing in it. You don't have to worry about the sodium. You don't have to worry about extra fat. So quick, easy, the way to go. Cindy, um, can you name a couple other high protein um, seafood items that we could, uh, that are a little more affordable, like the okay. cod? Right, so if you didn't want to use cod, think about using chicken or poultry. Chicken is really, you could do the very same thing with chicken. And I highly recommend getting some chicken tenders or taking your chicken breasts and cutting them into tender slices so mm -hmm. that it cooks up really easy. And right. anytime you're cooking it in liquid like that, you're absolutely getting, um, it's gonna be a lot more tender. Than if you were to, um, right. you know, like if you were to cook it on the grill or maybe even on the stove, but um, you can see how, whoa, oh my gosh, you can <laughs> see how delicious this um, this actually looks. Sorry about that. And um, you end up having um, this looks like so much on this small plate, but I'm going to add some of those extra veggies, and I'm going to do possibly a grain with that. And I might take some of these carrots or my, uh, maybe some cauliflower and steam it. My goal in the kitchen generally is that if I put a lot more effort into my main dish, like the seafood or the chicken dish, I'm going to do just a quick and easy steam. And you can even buy per, uh, packages of broccoli, cauliflower, carrots in a little pouch and it takes no time at all to steam them or pop them in the microwave with a tablespoon of water and you're good to go. So, you know, those are those quick and easy ideas that we just don't normally think about that are, um, you know, just very easy, easy ways to eat quick, simple, and with the mind diet in, in mind. So um, I Neva, Neva shared there's um, low cost proteins uh, with high omega-3s, uh, two other ideas, canned tuna and canned salmon. Absolutely. And those are two things that you could do so easy. You can shred those on salads. Um, I like to do like tuna melt sandwiches for a quick and easy lunch idea. Take a piece of whole grain bread. Um, you can even mix instead of mayonnaise in your tuna or salmon, you can have a little bit of uh, plain and flavored Greek yogurt, which again, adds some protein. And then um, you can even add a piece of cheese over top and pop that under the broiler. Delicious. That sounds um, good. Yeah. Or salmon. I don't know if you've ever had salmon patties or salmon croquettes, but canned salmon is absolutely wonderful in terms of affordability, high protein. And if you do use it, make sure that you crush up the bones in there because that's extra calcium that's mm. really good for you. You know, a lot of times people throw the bones away. Oh. All right. So that is all for this dish. I'm going to turn this off and um, we're going to move on to the next one. And what I wanted to do was show you a kind of a dessert idea, I guess, because a lot of people are always wanting a little sweet. And something like the Mind Diet really doesn't recommend a lot of sweets and pastries, but we all kind of tend towards liking a little bit of sweet after a meal. Um, my go-to is always fruit. In the summertime, I do berry crisps. So I'll take all my different berries, put them in a pan, and then make a little crumble topping using oatmeal, which is a whole grain, 
uh, a little bit of brown sugar. You can use some whole grain flour, like whole wheat flour. I even add some walnuts in there to give me that extra omega-3 fatty acid. And you can bake that in the oven. I don't put any extra sugar in my fruit because when it's in peak season like this, it's just already so delicious. And take advantage when fruits are in season and freeze them. You know, I buy extra when I when they're on sale and I'm always freezing and I'm putting them in little Ziploc bags for when you're when they're not as in season. Now, the problem in this area is we can generally get a lot of uh, everything. You know, a lot of times people don't even know what's considered in season because we're lucky enough to have things flown in from other countries. But you know what, if you're wanting it in peak season with peak flavor, you want to eat it when it's in season. And right now is the way to go in terms of all of your veggies and fruit. Okay, my last recipe is going to be a, um, it's going to be chia seed pudding. And because it takes a little bit of time for it to gel, I made a batch overnight to show you what the end product looks like. So chia seed pudding. So let's talk about chia seeds. A lot of times you hear, you know, different products and you're wondering how good they really are. Chia seeds um, are really just a grain. They're kind of a black grain. They uh, are very high in fiber and they're also very high in omega-3 fatty acids. And the grain, when at liquid is added to it, they kind of puff up. And it, when you're eating them uh, in a smoothie or if you put them in a soup or a stew or like I did in some Greek yogurt and milk, it puffs up and it gives you that full feeling so that you don't really, so you stay stati satisfied longer. And that's really helpful if you're one of those people that's always trying to shave off a few calories. So in this bowl, I'm gonna add my chia seeds and I'm gonna add a cup of milk. And I'm using the uh, skim milk, but you can certainly use low fat milk. Now my diet does not really talk very much about dairy, but dairy is so good for bone health. And especially something like milk and yogurt, you're getting the protein, you're getting calcium with vitamin D. And vitamin D is the key that unlocks your body's ability to use the calcium. And that's why dairy is so especially important for good bone health. So all I'm going to do here is mix all this together. And as you could see, I used a vanilla flavored Greek yogurt, which has extra protein and it does have a little bit of sugar. I'm going to add some vanilla because I really want this to be a really good vanilla flavor. And then I'm going to add some maple syrup just for a little bit of extra sugar, like maybe a tablespoon. And all I'm going to do is mix this up until there's, the clump, there's no clumps in there. And then I'm gonna cover it and I'm gonna put it in the refrigerator overnight. It's as easy as that. Now, when it's done, it's gonna look like this. It really looks like tapioca pudding. It is absolutely wonderful, delicious. And if you're like me, someone who likes a little bit of texture, it really is a bonus. But I'm gonna show you all the different things that you can do with this. You can take and you can put it in a little dessert cup because you're special. You always want to serve it in a, a fancy way. And you can serve this with so many different things on top, keeping the mind diet in mind. So I'm going to add some of my berries that are here, my raspberries, my blueberries, and then maybe even a little strawberry to go along with. And, uh, you know, how fun is that? Or I can take a little bit of cocoa powder and I can add some cocoa powder to this. See if I can do this in, the, in this fancy little cup. And you can make a chocolate version. Or if you don't want to do that, you might even take some mini dark chocolate chips and add those to the mix and make a little trifle out of it. Or you can add some of your favorite nuts to this. Another thing that I often use uh, throughout the year is canned pumpkin or 
uh, I like to use the pure pumpkin as opposed to the pumpkin pie feeling because this is full of nutrition and it has such a wonderful flavor that's not limited to Thanksgiving and Christmas. So, you know, think about adding a tablespoon of that to this, um, to the pudding. And um, you have a wonderful dessert that you can do in so many different ways. And if you're not really into sweets that much, you can skip the maple syrup. You can um, even have this as like a nice little breakfast idea. And it's so delicious and so wonderful. And it really gives you that full feeling because of those chia seeds puffing up. So I highly recommend doing something like that, that may be a little different. And I have to say that the chia seeds may be probably one of the most expensive ingredients in this whole demo today, but you can use them in so many different ways. And some stores actually carry them in bulk. So you don't have to buy a big package of it. And that's what I recommend for a lot of things that you might be cooking, or if you're using a certain nut or a certain spice in your, in your cooking, you don't have to buy a whole big bunch. You can find everything in smaller quantities if, you, uh, if they have it in bulk. So, um, you know, this is, this is quick, this is easy, this is very nutritious. Um, if you want, you can have a little glass of wine with your meal once a day. You know, take advantage of seasonal fruits and vegetables because that is one sure way that you're going to get all those wonderful uh, variety in your diet. Before we leave, I have a few things that I kind of wanted to mention that I wrote down just to make sure that we covered that it's not really about any one certain food. You know, even though we talk about berries being one of the most important things in this mind diet, you don't want to discount other fruits and vegetables. You know, you want to be sure you get a good variety. I always say we kind of, um, you know, sometimes advance some of these foods to superstar them. And in reality, there's a lot of good things. So it's not about one single food here and there. It's about the meal pattern. It's about what we're eating as a big picture. Um, you want to consider, um, you know, there's a lot of different ways to health. You know, some of you may follow a cuisine or um, maybe come from a culture that has a variety of different food spices. Go for it. You know, you don't have to follow mine. You don't have to follow what I've done, but add your own, um, you know, personal touch to it. Um, sometimes it isn't better. Some more of a good thing isn't always better. So in other words, you know, like I said before, some people think if, if seafood is good, I'm going to have it every day, every meal. Well, then it could potentially be harmful. So you don't want to get into that routine either. You want to just think about, um, you know, what you can eat in a meal, having a good variety and not getting kind of super focused on just one thing. Upgrades are really essential. And what I mean by upgrades is Maybe you're one of those people that right now your diet is a fast food diet, going through the turnstiles, maybe eating a lot of fast food, maybe eating a lot of gravies and sauces and fried food. One step at a time, you know, add in some things. You don't have to overhaul everything overnight. I think people look at a demo like this and they think, well, I'm never going to be able to do all that. Well, take one thing, maybe just add something nutritious like the dark green leafy vegetables, you know, just add one thing and then change it over time. So, um, you know, but what the studies basically showed is the more you do it, the more you adhere to it, the better the outcome. So, but it doesn't have to be overnight. Um, before you start, always think about talking to your healthcare provider. And the main reason is, you know, there could be something that interacts with the medication you're on. Um, it's important to really get, you know, get some advice from someone who really knows the interactions. Uh, seek the services of a registered dietitian nutritionist. There's a lot of us around and I am more than help, uh, happy to help you find someone in your area. And uh, we do one-on-one -on -one consultations. We come into your home, we teach you cooking. There's a lot of things we can do. And um, if you're not sure how to get started, you know, seek the services of a dietitian to really help you get started in the kitchen. And I'm so happy to be here today. And uh, we've already talked about 
our next one. And I hope that you look forward to that. Uh, in the coming months, we're gonna do a program on healthy eating around the holidays. So thank you so much for having me, Senior Source. It's, it's my pleasure to share you know, this, this information. And if I could be of any service to anyone, just let me know. And now I'm gonna give it back to you, Katie and Kimberly. Okay. Well, thank you so much. I am starving now that I've seen all this delicious <laughs> food. It really looks great. I love all the seafood ideas. Kimberly, did you want to say a couple of things? I do. I'm just going to share my screen for a few minutes and I'm going to just ask everyone to just hang out with us for a few more minutes. Um, we will be giving away um, one of the cookbooks as always. And so um, Sydney's holding it up right now. I just want to share a little bit of information about the senior source. I promise to be brief because I just want to be mindful of everyone's time today. And I am bringing up my screen just for this little one slide that I want to share with everyone. All right. So at the Senior Source, if this is your first time joining us today, we are a nonprofit organization and we're located in Dallas, Texas, and we serve individuals 50 years and older. Um, my particular department is a caregiver support program. And what we do is that we provide support to caregivers. And if you are a caregiver or have been a caregiver, you know how stressful and over, overwhelming and also rewarding that job can be at times. And so we are here to serve you and just help guide you along your caregiving journey. How we go about doing just that every day is through these items I have on the screen. So we provide information and resources for um, support and assistance. Um, just say, for instance, if you were needing grab bars or trying to figure out how to get a, a wheelchair ramp built, or you just had questions about maybe different activities um, in the community to help keep your loved one going and engaged, you could give us a call and we would point you in the right direction. Then we also do something called a care consultation with individuals and with families. A care consultation is just simply uh, a meeting. Um, you would schedule a meeting with one of our caregiver support specialists. We could do it over the phone or we could do it virtually. Um, it could be individually or it could be with family members. Sometimes family members live in different areas and they all wanna hear the information at the same time to help make informed decisions. But we would sit down during a care consultation. We would listen to you and what's going on in your particular caregiving journey and then give you advice or guidance um, that are, that's more specific to those needs. It could be anything from applying for Medicare, Medicaid to, um, again, how do I go about getting my loved one evaluated if I feel like they have dementia or what do I do to, to get them to stop driving? It could be all of that and more. Then we also offer support groups for caregivers. Um, it is always great to check out a support group. If you haven't done so, I encourage you to do. Uh, we have support groups once a month here at the Senior Source. They're the third Tuesday and Wednesday of each month. Um, we have them at different times of the day. I believe the Tuesdays group is at 11 um, a.m. to 1.30. And I believe the Wednesday evening support group starts at 6 p.m. and goes to 8.30 or 7.30. Um, with that being said, you know, it is just a time for caregivers to come together um, to get information. We provide a little bit of education, but then we open the floor for all the caregivers to share. And I tell you, that is probably the biggest education um, caregivers receive because they hear from each other what's working for them, what's not working. Different resources or ideas you might have never thought to try typically come out of the support group. So if you have not attended a support group, I encourage you to do so. And then there's caregiver education and seminars, much like what you've attended today with Cindy and all of the great information she provided to us with the Mind Diet. We offer educational seminars on all different types of topics. You can go to our website, take a look at our calendar. That's www.thesenorsource.org and see all the education classes we are offering. I know we have something coming up um, as it relates to grief. Um, for caregivers, grief and loss, that's going to be on the 20th. And then we also have another seminar that's coming up on the 28th, and it's um, activities at every stage of Alzheimer's disease. So we look forward to 
you joining us for future presentations and education. Um, and we will be in touch with you through our um, caregiver focus note and other emails that we send out, just letting people know the education that we're offering here at the Senior Source. So thank you guys so much for being with us today. Katie, I'm gonna give it to you so we can raffle off our Dash Diet cookbook. All right. So yes, yeah, Cindy is also an author of several books and she's been generous enough to um, give one away today to a lucky winner. So we're gonna spin the wheel. But before we do that, I just wanna remind everyone that when the webinar ends, there will be a window that pops up with a short survey. And if you would please take a minute to fill that out, that really helps us to keep providing you with good webinars like this one. All right, let's, let's see who our winner is. Ronit, 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 I'm sorry if I'm getting the name wrong. You're the winner. So I will make sure that um, Cindy gets your contact information and she will get that to you. Congratulations. All right, thanks everyone. Thanks, Cindy. Thank you. Bye.